So good evening, everyone. I see we have a quorum. So I'm Mike Tuhill, chair of the uh, Lunenburg Open Space Ad Hoc Committee. And before I call the meeting to order, I'm going to read the open meeting law notice. Um, please be advised the meeting is being recorded and broadcast live over Lunenburg Public Access Channel and on Facebook Live on the Public Access Facebook page. And within 24 hours, it will, the recording will be available on Lunenburg Access YouTube. Um, if you are on Zoom and you want to speak, I'm going to ask anyone other than committee members um, to hold off until we get down to the respective items that you want to talk about, and then I will recognize you, but you use the raise hand function, and I will recognize you as the chair. And anyone who is on the telephone, if you've called in, the toll-free number is 888-475-4499, webinar <clears throat> ID is 79273703353. Admit some more people here. And um, if you are on the telephone and you want to speak, please dial star nine. And apparently I will be able to see that and recognize you. So with that, I see we have um, four members. Um, Mike Tuhill, chair. Anna Lockwood, our vice chair, is here. Uh, Brandon Kibbe, who's our clerk, is here. Um, I, I see Eric Hines, um, community member. I don't see Matt Allison or Mary Wilson yet, hoping they can also join us. So, but we do have four, so we have a quorum. So we'll proceed. So I'm gonna call this meeting to order. And the first order of business is to approve, review and approve the minutes from, we don't have the September 8th minutes, uh, but we do have the January 11th minutes. So um, I did email those out to all the committee members. Have you folks had a chance to take a look at them? Yes. Okay. Any changes? I know Brandon and I, Brandon wrote them and I reviewed them already. I have no changes. Uh, Anna or Eric, do you guys have any changes? Um, no, I don't. Nope, no changes. Okay. So I'd entertain a motion to accept the minutes. I make a motion to accept the minutes for our January meeting. I'll second. Thank you, Eric. Um, so we'll do roll call since we're on Zoom. Um, Eric? Aye. Anna? Aye. Brandon? Aye. And I'm Mike Tuhill, the chair, I vote aye as well. And I still don't see, I don't, I don't know whether you guys can see, no, more people in the waiting room. Mary's in the waiting room. So Mary's joining us as well. So I don't see Matt, but I do see Mary coming on. Hi, Mary. We moved on to the first um, order of business and um, reviewed and approved the minutes from January 11th. Um, so that's where we are. The second order of business is just um, an announcement for me again about the open space conference. Um, I attended last week, which was about writing open space plans. We don't have to do that for a while, thanks to Brandon and others that have taken care of that for us. Uh, but it was very informative. Um, this week is about uh, stakeholder outreach. Um, they're going to have an, uh, a, a session in two weeks or three weeks, excuse me, on biomaps, which should be pretty interesting. And I'm forgetting what the third session is, but it's every Thursday from noon to 1230. So if if you folks haven't signed up and want to, it's still open. You can still sign up and join. Um, the fourth item of business is follow up with town council report on title examination for Zero Lake Shirley Reservoir, Reservoir Road. I did meet with town council um, last week. And actually, I, I have a, a follow up meeting coming up um, in or week before last, I have a follow-up meeting coming up in February with town council on this. So the the issue about the the title, it, it's town property, but the, the title is a little cloudy in the past because the, the changes in the configuration of the lake and everything made it a little difficult. So um, town council's made some recommendations and he's talking to um, the town manager about how to proceed with uh, clearing the title for, for that particular parcel. Um, um, any any um, the recommendations that you can share with us, or just too much legal information that? Well, he had he had three different options. Um, 
and he wanted to talk to I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until I talk to him again okay. to go over to go over the different options. Um he wanted to talk to Heather and to I think the, the chair of the board of selectmen um about the different options that he could but he, there were three different ways that he thought that we could go ahead and clear that title. Oh perfect. Okay. Um, I think I've admitted everybody at this point. Okay, let's get on to the main topic of discussion, which is uh, the, the Parmenter Road and Reservoir Road parcels. Um, we've just talked about Reservoir Road a little bit, and we're going to talk about Parmenter Road. At the last meeting, we had a lot of good discussion between board members and between members of the public. I see Joel's on again. Joel participated a lot at the last meeting um, about the use of the, the uh, Parmenter Road parcel, the potential use of the Parmenter Road parcel. And I want to remind everyone that this committee is not charged with developing land, not charged with formalizing plans about anything on land. Our job is to look at town-owned open space and look at potential open space and make recommendations to other boards as to the disposition of those open spaces and the disposition being who controls it. And Parmenter Road and Zero uh, Lake Shirley Reservoir Road right now are both under the general municipal category. So they're under the care and control of the Board of Selectmen. So they could be used for any purpose that the Board of Selectmen desired. And the, the question before this committee is, is there a potentially a, a better um, steward for those parcels within the town and we've been discussing the, the the potential of that being the parks and rec department um, because they're both uh, they one they could be used for conservation land as well and i know bob Pease, the the chair of the conservation commission is on tonight um, they could be used for conservation uh, they could be used for public open space recreational open space so that's the discussion that we've had thus far and again we're not we're not proposing any particular use of those parcels. What we had was a discussion about should those parcels be used for car top access for kayaks and canoes, what would be the constraints on those parcels? And and I volunteered at the last meeting to put together a memo, which I will share with you. Um, it's in draft form and it just went to the members of the committee so far. And the memo um, speaks to if if this were to to if we were to recommend to the board of selectmen that that uh, 53 parmenter should go under the care and control of park and rec um what other recommendations would this committee make along with that with regard to the potential uses or considerations from park and rec for uses of the parcel so i'm going to share my screen and put that up and hopefully i captured uh, i got too many things open here I apologize. Here, let's see if we grab the right one here. So this is simply a draft. Hopefully I'm showing the draft open space committee recommendations regarding Lake Shirley parcels to everyone. Um, this is just a draft. This is a draft for discussion first among the committee members, then obviously among the members of the public that are here that are interested in this particular subject. Um, the, the beginning of it's just a reiteration. The town owns three parcels along the western shore of Lake Shirley, uh, two of which are, you know, of a size and a location that they would be um, useful for access to Lake Shirley. Zero Flynn Road really is, and it's a very small parcel, even though it's got a lot of frontage. So we're, we've been concentrating on 51 Parmenter and Zero um, Shirley Reservoir Lake Road, or Reservoir Road, Stump Cove. Um, they're all held under general municipal land care control of select board. Um, and then just, you know, given the lack of access to Lake Shirley, public access to Lake Shirley, um, we've been discussing the, the possibility, the feasibility 
of using some of these parcels and actually the the reservoir road parcels already used Dumpco is already used for access to the lake uh, informally and so with that regard to that parcel what we're lock, looking at longer term is is um, again through the park and rec department is making some potential um, improvements to that property so that we don't have to have people parking on reservoir road um, but that's down down the road that's a long ways away because we have to clear the title with town council on that and then I put together just this bullet item list um, if any of these parcels were to be considered as public access to Lake Shirley uh, this committee the open space committee would recommend that the care and control be given to the parks and rec um, department that the parcels in question be used as car top canoe or kayak access to the lake and posted as such that no motorized watercraft be allowed to access the lake on the parcels and will post it as such that no trailers be allowed to park um, on or adjacent to any of these parcels and that will also be posted and that the um, only on-site parking not parking on the streets not parking in the neighbors yards any of that kind of stuff but limited to what we could fit on site and that the area be posted as one of the things Joel brought up as trash and, and the area be posted as carry in carry out very similar to our trail systems um, where if you go use the trail systems and you bring your granola bars with you you take the wrappers out with you so these are just kind of some general um, recommendations that we would make should this committee decide that it wanted to make a recommendation to the board of selectmen um, to have the care and control turned over to the parks department for the purpose of kayak and canoe access and I'll stop talking for a second and I'd like some of the committee members to to weigh in, please. Um, so I'll, I'll weigh in first, just as a as a new a new information. Um, Karen Menard and I, Karen is also in the meeting. We scheduled a meeting with the chief of police for this week. Um, we wanted to explore safety concerns um, with the chief, and the meeting was just yesterday. And we we talked about safety concerns on the water about small vessels being on the water in the lake that has motorized uh, vessels, you know, boats, larger boats, and also safety regarding the road. Um, and just briefly, it, the conversation was very short. Um, he said, you know, the, the lake does have kayaks and canoes that go on the lake. And for the most part, people, they are, on a kayak or a canoe, they tend to be mindful about being on a space in a lake that has motorized boats and they think people tend to be careful about it. So he didn't see any added risks than what it exists now uh, for, for the water use. As for the street parking um, and other safety concerns, he he said he would be he would be willing to be what he he said that if we work with the residents about defining the most ideal type of parking for on the property or on the street, that he would be behind and make the recommendation for select board, because any kind of parking restrictions on the street that has to come from him to the select board. Um, and he did say, you know, thinking not not making a non not allowing parking on the area sounds like a good idea, but that also means that residents wouldn't we would have to enforce that even for residents you can't enforce for some purpose but not others but there are possibilities of maybe reducing the parking on street parking by reducing making it just on one side or not both sides and but the most important what he really emphasized was work with the residents to find the best case scenario for you know if there will be on street parking or not um, and that was really the, the, the gist of the conversation regarding safety concerns. Okay. Thank you. And you, you did that in your capacity as chair of park and rec, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Brandon, Eric, you have any thoughts on this? Sorry. Busy taking notes. Yep. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so um, I guess my one thought on, and I know uh, I think Matt Allison brought this up on the meeting, uh, uh, our last meeting, was 
the idea of motorized, the a limit on motorized would limit certain car top access for, you know, you think of a small John boat, somebody might have a trolling motor on and they go, they, they put it in and they, they put it, they have a trolling motor and they go out and go fishing um, or, you know, uh, uh, some sort of, uh, you know, one of those rubber boats where the same thing where they put a trolling motor or something on it. Some people access car top um, uh, uh, access points to hand launch a boat and then, you know, hand carry down the battery and the trolling motor. Um, so it may unnecessarily, you know, that type of limitation, if there's not a ramp to launch a, a you know, classic motorized boat, by simply posting it as no non-motorized, you may be limiting access that is traditionally used by hand carry type boaters. Flagging that really, I don't think it's a huge concern. If that's the will of of, of everybody else, I don't think it, you know it's going to change much. So, okay. um, but I just really want to stick a stick a flag in that. Um, well, I, I I'll be honest with you, Brandon. I did that intentionally, and I did it intentionally because it it it's you get the slippery slope of you know when what's what's acceptable size and what's not acceptable size, and I don't want to see somebody lugging a ten horsepower Johnson down there. To throw on the back of their boat you know which you can do yeah um, so that's why i i proposed it this way the other thing i want to say eric before we get to you or mary is you know we're we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit um and it's good that we're talking about specifics if we talk about that particular use of that parcel but this committee's job is to make a recommendation to the board of selectmen as to who should control um, this parcel, and then maybe along with it, have some recommendations. Should it be used for um, car top access? What you know, what some of these committee members feel um, should be some of the limitations. So, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds and discussing the the shape and size and configuration and you know ADA compliance and the slope and everything else out there because that's we're not we're not the designers. We're not the planners um, that would fall to another board within this town. So having said that, Eric, you have some thoughts on this? Um, none that haven't already been expressed. Okay. Yeah. Mary? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, so uh, along those lines, uh, you know, I, I just, just got done writing a uh, grant uh, submittal on behalf of the Conservation Commission. And uh, one of the big things about grants uh, is, um, particularly for mass trails, is accessibility, um, not necessarily uh, ADA uh, accessibility, but accessibility and ensuring that um, the, you know, open spaces in Massachusetts are accessible to all to the greatest extent that they can be. And uh, and with that, I, I just kind of took a note that the limitation on trailers, I understand that you wouldn't want to have power boats right uh, down there and the big trailers associated with that. But for example, a lot of older people that like to get out and, and uh, you know, enjoy our open spaces, maybe can't lift a uh, kayak onto their roof and might have one of those little, my, my, um, my uncle has a little four by four trailer that weighs you know probably 70 pounds that he tows around behind his car um and uh and so i i would think we would not want to limit that kind of use or make a recommendation along those lines um and i mean to the extent that we're not you know uh going to be the body governing it i i wonder if we should even go into the details at all to the select board about what the usage might be other than uh you know powered non-powered uh, and then let Parks and Rec determine how they want to monitor that. Yeah, and ultimately the the configuration and design will be up to them, not not up to us. And this was Mary. You, you, unfortunately, you had missed the last meeting. I I did this. I, in, I watched it on uh, okay on, uh, public access. So I did this in response to um, a number of the comments that we got from the residents out there. And again, th these are these are my thoughts. These aren't you know. These aren't the what the committee came up with. These are what I came up with between the last meeting and this meeting. 
And I and the actually the 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 point you made about small trailers for kayaks and canoes, um, Anna had made that last time. And it's a point well taken. And the only reason why I wrote it in here like this is because there's going to be a limitation on to how, how many vehicles you can fit in there. And if you start to bring trailers in there too, it's going to make it progressively more difficult to turn things around down in that area. And that's the only reason why I wrote it in. And again, we can we can scratch all that and we can make a simple recommendation to the board or not make a recommendation, you know, recommend not to move it over. That's what this committee is going to wind up doing. Well, I, I would recommend that we uh, keep uh, pretty uh, clinical as to what our scope and charter is in making the recommendation to the board. And okay. if it's just who should have control, right, um, in general usage, then I think if that's consistent with our charter, let's leave our recommendation to that. That would be my recommendation. Okay, fair enough. Ani, you've got your hand up. Um, so a couple thoughts, you know, with, all, well, with everything that's technical about the boats and size of motors and, you know, needs and, you know, is a battery operator or not, um, in my mind, you know, I always not having the right language for boating because I don't boat. I always thought of as a small vessel. You know, we create a infrastructure that only serves small vessels. And I think I do like the term that Brendan uses, which is, you know, hand carried to the launch pad and and not. And I think that is the way to address it because I can also see um, not just access. You know, thinking of the trailer, not not addressing the trailer issue, just thinking of, you know, using the lake for the purpose of recreation. Um, people with limited mo mobility and uh, and skills, they, you know, you can't necessarily can kayak or canoe too far out. But if you have a little motor that can just get you a little bit farther, you might be able to enjoy fishing and doing something else that would be of leisure. Um, now, in terms of the trailer, I, you know, I'm, I am not very tall, but I am strong and, and I can't put a, a kayak, my kayak of one person on top of my car. Um, but that, you know, that can be limited in terms of, we, I don't think we can say it has to be car top only, but by not having parking that allows for a lot of, for trailers, you will limit it accessibility by that. And if we work with the resident to have uh, the, the parking scenario that works best for the, for the neighbors and for our purpose, you know, if someone comes with a, a little pickup truck that has a trailer, right there you're taking for a kayak, right? Someone can pull in, put their kayak down, and then if they're parking on the street, whatever the scenario that we work out, if they have that, that little trailer behind their car, Right there, you're limiting space, the usage from two parts to one car. So there is, you know, the pros and cons and the scenarios that you can explore, that you can make it things to be workable and, and ideal for most people. It's not a home run for everybody, but it's something that I think you can reach there. So, you know, I, I always thought of it as a small vessel and in whatever scenario we have, to launch it, we, would, we, we wouldn't create an infrastructure that would, would allow for much larger vessels. And my last point is to Mary's uh, point of, you know, limit the recommendation um, to, to, yes, we recommend to be move to the current control of parks or not. Yes, we can do that, but it doesn't mean that that's, the charter says we can do that, but the charter doesn't necessarily say that we, we can't make any other recommendations. I think, I think it would be great for the residents if we have these conversations now and if we can pass it on along the recommendation, some bullet points that we as a commission agree upon. And I think that will give the, the residents some assurances that we, this is a good process. This is, you know, you participate, come to our meetings and voice your concerns and we work with. And I think that just is gonna help us on the next, on the next phase. Um, so that's, you know, yes, we could make a recommendation to just move to the current control, but we can also make some other recommendations that would help us get to a better uh, better end product. 
the my last point to that is that we have a, a committee here that has vast knowledge. Uh, when you get to parks and recreation, it's going to be parks and recreation people. It's uh, I would love if we have can transfer some of the knowledge that we have within this commission to parks and recreation through the recommendations. That's all. Thank you. Okay. And I just want to remind everyone, this isn't this isn't an either or situation. We're not talking about um, 51 Parmenter or Shirley uh, Reservoir, you know, Reservoir Road, where both are public open spaces. So we're actually looking at both parcels. Uh, and I know that most of the folks here are probably here for 51 Parmenter. Um, but, you know, maybe it turns out down the road, Park and Rec decides that if this goes that direction, that 51 Parmenter is not appropriate even for small trailers, and maybe the small trailers go over to um, the the Shirley the Reservoir Road site, and maybe that's the place where where people can put in you know that have small trailers um, to to be able to bring a kayak over. So we're not you know this isn't either or. We're not trying to limit the conversation here. We want to make recommendations to the board. Unfortunately, we can't make a recommendation to the board of selectmen about um, Shirley Reservoir Road, Reservoir Lake yet because of the issue of clearing the title. Um, any other thoughts from, I see a bunch of other folks with hands up, but I wanna hear from the, the uh, committee members first, Eric. Thank you, Michael. Um, I guess I, I was just wondering, is it possible to kind of strike a balance here between, you know, not necessarily recommending limitations on the usage yet, but acknowledging some of the concerns as we pass on the, the recommendation that it be transferred to the care and control and, and kind of instead of um, including bullet points recommending, you know, no motorized vehicles, just include bullet points sort of saying it's noted that we've gotten a lot of feedback, concern about parking. And, you know, these are things that will need to be ultimately taken into consideration. Yep. Good point. Okay. Okay, I see I don't see anybody else from the committee wants to speak. So I'm going to first recognize the Conservation Commission Chair, Bob Pease. You're muted, Bob. Bob, you're still muted. Bob, you're, Bob, you're muted. Is that better? Yes, it is. All right. Well, that depends on whether you want to hear what I want to say. Um, <laughs> um, I think this process should start with Parks and Rec. I think if Parks and Rec wants, wants to consider putting um, a boat top access there, uh, that they should write a letter uh, to the Open Space Committee uh, asking uh, for Open Space uh, to recommend its uh, transfer to the care and control so that Parks and Rec, you know, can consider it. Um, I think that um, and, and let Parks and Rec uh, deal with all of the concerns about, um, you know, the neighbors and the details, motors, non-motors, trailers, no trailers, slope, you know, all that other stuff. Um, I mean, Open space only has the power to recommend. Um, and if if this was going to ever occur, it would have to go to uh, the planning commission. There'd have to be a site plan review because as soon as you start and establish parking, uh, you have to do a site plan review. Um, you know, it would have to go to town meeting. Uh, it'd be a very political process because I'm assuming uh, that the neighbors are gonna be very opposed. Uh, that's been my experience on conservation. Anytime uh, you, you propose doing something on conservation land uh, and there's some abutters, the abutters, uh, you know, they, they, they love it to public open land that no one absolutely uses, um, you know. And so, um, I mean, I, I just, I, I urge you uh, to keep it simple. You know, either you got to recommend it be transferred to uh, care and control of Parks and Rec, or you're not, and not get into the weeds. If you get into the weeds, you're going to spend a lot of time in these meetings. 
uh, to, to no avail because you have no power, uh, you know, other than to recommend. So stick to the power you have, keep it simple. Um, and and that, that's my suggestion. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Bob. Points well taken. Uh, Mr. Swenson, welcome back. <clears throat> and by Thank the way, you. good night. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much. Yeah, um, one of the one of the biggest take home messages I got from the last meeting was that um, you guys are involved in brainstorming, and um, it was perfectly loud and clear. I, I I love to hear that message. And there's really you know you guys aren't building or designing, so you know that's loud and clear. I I greatly appreciate that. Um, and what Bob just said specifically was that the power you have is to make recommendations. Um, but I do think that um, making a recommendation should also take into consideration some of the biggest aspects that we're concerned with, um, and that is uh, safety and um, considerations for the Americans with Disabilities Act and the slope and all that other stuff as well, because um, the thing that bothers me about it is there are other parcels that might be less challenging and wouldn't disrupt this particular neighborhood. Um, the three acre parcel on uh, Shirley Reservoir is very large, great parking. Um, one thing that you, that if Bob had actually stayed on, he could probably comment on this, but one of the residents of the lake um, overstepped their bounds and actually created a paved parking lot on that land. So interestingly, you guys already have a four to five car parking hmm. surface on uh, zero reservoir road that could be used for public land without any cost to um, any of the residents. Um, and that would probably save that poor individual from having the cost of ripping that back out. Um, so, I mean, there's really, I understand that <clears throat> you're going to recommend something on both these parcels. I would really just like to formally say that um, I am opposed to the use of the Parmenter lot because it is very challenging and there are other better places, in my opinion, although I will admit that, you know, you're still having title problems. So that probably isn't as easy as I'm making it sound, but um, that other parcel basically keeps a lot of individuals out of the, the neighborhood, keeps them away from this very challenging three road section, um, which is a danger. It's a, it's a school bus turnaround. Um, and uh, the other point I wanted to make is that uh, my wife is an architect and she's worked on Americans with Disabilities Act um, complications for uh, the McDonald's Corporation for, for years. And um, the second you guys do any site changes, um, you basically enact that law and you're gonna have to build a huge ramp to overcome the slope on that surface for an individual to enjoy what all the other people, all the other public people get to enjoy. So developing that site is gonna be extremely costly for the town and for the taxpayers, me included. And that's why I'd actually just like to openly object to um, a recommendation that would allow that to be used for car top access. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And I should have done this at the top, um, Mr. Swenson, just for the record, can you state your name <clears throat> and address? Uh, Joel Swenson, 17 Ruth Street. Thank you very much, appreciate thank it. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I see uh, Mary, you have your hand up, same thing. Could you state your full name and address, please? Hi, I'm um, Mary Perkins. I live at 62 Ruth Street. And um, I have three things and I'll make them really quick. One is uh, Robin Wilson this morning that owns Shady Point contacted me to speak on her behalf because she isn't able to make the meeting. And she didn't know if the Parks and Recreation Committee was aware that they already offer um, to the town of Lunenburg any residents for an annual pass of $40 to allow kayaks and canoes. And you can have four, if you can fit four in your car, you can have four in your car for $40. If you can fit six, 
They're also open to allowing um, to do the passes at the library like they do um, for museums, like the Museum of Science. You can go get a pass and check it out like a book. They are open to do that with the town as well. They're also concerned about um, this site as we all are. Um, my second point is um, I've been doing a lot of research and I have, as you can see, this <laughs> is all when they put in the streets. And a lot of people, I think that, that um, they bought, the town bought that, I mean, got that parcel through non-payment of taxes, but that's not true. The town bought that um, parcel and they bought it for the, the storm drain. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that need to be thought about because of the easements with the storm drain, not being able to go on the storm drain. I mean, the town felt so um, wanted to protect that stone, storm drain that they actually went out and purchased this property just for the storm drain. So I think that needs to be in, taken into consideration. And then my third um, thing is that, um, there's a lot of um, concern, concerns at Lake Whalum with their ramp and public access because people bring grills there and they litter and they, you know, they, there's loitering going on. And while you may say, oh, this is just going to be for um, car top access, people are going to stop going, stopping at Target, blowing up their floats and walking down and floating there. And it, it doesn't happen today. I know you said it was informally Stump Cove, but Stump Cove was made formal. And the reason for that was for the dam. We had to, our dam broke in the eighties and we had to build a new dam and get state funding. And the only way we could get state funding is if we had public access. And the reason why we don't have the problem with people with floating is because there's a lot of weeds there. It's perfect for kayaking and it's safe for kayaking. I take my kayak to Stump Cove on purpose because it's not safe kayaking. Even though the police said people try to be safe. They, it really isn't. And we had a major, major accident where a woman almost lost her life and is disfigured for the rest of her life because she was hit by a motorboat on the lake. And the other thing is, is that these maps um, show every single tree. And this map was done in 1990 for the town and it's signed by the town. And it shows every tree. And if you look at all those trees that are on that property, they're all still here today. And so from a conservation perspective, I think it should be just left as is, as a beautiful piece of open space when we already have the Stump Cove access. It is, it's gonna ruin our neighborhood. Our neighborhood is very, very congested with very, very small lots all along Palmer and Johnson. And to have that type of traffic in and out of our neighborhood that doesn't go anywhere, it's all dead end, <clears throat> is gonna be very disruptive to our neighborhood. Thank you for allowing okay. me to speak. Yes, thank you, Mary. Appreciate it. Um, Rich Pearson. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. First of all, thank you for uh, donating your time and everything to um, the open space and the town. I appreciate that. Um, second, I just voice in my displeasure on uh, Parmenta Road. Like Rich, I'm sorry. Can I stop you for a second? Sure. We know your name. Where's What's your address, please? Oh, I'm sorry, 75 Ruth Street. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Um, yeah, I just like to voice my displeasure in that location. Uh, I too think the intersection is awful. My daughter gets on and off the bus there. Uh, a couple of times I've almost got hit with a car coming the other way. Um, and the streets are pretty tight there. So if you did uh, allow parking on the streets, it's, it's gonna be a nightmare, uh, especially in that intersection coming and going. Uh, I walked it the other day, I can only see maybe four parking spots on that lot. And I don't think there'd be room for trailers if that's the way they're gonna be looking at it. Um, so I just wanted to voice my displeasure, uh, displeasure in that site too, so. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Um, I have Remax Patriot Realty. Can you introduce yourselves, please? Yes, my name is Fiona King and my husband is with me, David King, and we live at 667 Reservoir Road. Um, and uh, 
I would have to, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for holding this meeting. And, um, you know, it is important to consider all the open spaces that you have uh, under the under your purview and, and how to maximize those for public enjoyment. Um, so I commend you for that. Um, I would say that I also strongly object to uh, the site on Parmenter Road. I don't live anywhere near there. Um, however, I certainly know the area very, very well. It's highly congested, as has already been mentioned, and it has a very, very steep incline. And I really would not be conducive. Um, one of my biggest uh, concerns, quite frankly, is the traffic. We live actually across from Shady Point, and the owners of Shady Point do a, a superb job of sort of looking after very large numbers of people um, that access the lake through their facility. And uh, they're great neighbors. Um, ever since COVID, they've moved from a sort of pay per a visit to a membership fee or annualized fees. And I think that's helped control things as well. Um, however, my big concern is um, it sounds like a wonderful idea to provide more public access, but unfortunately, both of these sites are challenged. You have a bridge that leads through Reservoir Road from the um, um, Ke for the Keatings, uh, Keatings um, that only allows for a single car. And that's already treacherous. I can't imagine increasing traffic that's not going to just come from our town, but word will catch on and people will be coming if, from towns, uh, all sorts of towns, from Lancaster, from Lemonster, from Fitchburg, et cetera, uh, particularly if this becomes a park-like setting. And while I don't want to limit other people's enjoyment of the lake, that's not my intention, I think it has to be monitored, it has to be controlled, and it has to be done thoughtfully. And I've witnessed um, controlled mayhem, if you will, over at Shady Point because of the incredible demand that people have for that lake access. And I've experienced what it's like when it's controlled. I can't even imagine what it could culminate to uncontrolled. Um, and, you know, I would tell you, I, I remember in 2019 that the cars started coming into Shady Point at 3.30 in the morning on July 4th. So, and, and they just lined up. And there's been events there and so on that have been very loud during the day. And we've had to call the police only to find out that there's no, there, there's no sound ordinances. So I, I have strong concerns around traffic. And you already, we already have now, of course, as you know, a very, very large distribution center, which is going to put huge stress on, on the roads uh, that 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 road, uh, Shirley Road, that bypasses Reservoir Road, um, and I really think that we need to sit back and really think about how dangerous is it going to be to increase traffic through the um, through that tunnel. Whether you are looking at the Parmenter site or the Reservoir site, and how are you going to affect control um, so people are kept safe and it doesn't turn into a mob scene. And I will tell you, Shady Point does it with police, um, with staff, et cetera, that are there all summer long. Are we going to start having, you know, have we taken that into consideration? And my only comment I'd like to make is that, you know, we moved to this town five years, six years ago, and I was quite surprised to find out that the town contributes not, not one dime to the support and care and maintenance of the lake. And since you're taking recommendations to the the, the elders that run this town, I think it'd be really nice that if they're trying to figure a way to put more people on a lake that they pay nothing for, and all of, all of us residents pay thousands of dollars a year through all the events we do to try and maintain the weeds and control the weeds and the algae and all the things to try and make sure this is a beautiful lake. I would love to see the town, if you're taking recommendations, to maybe maybe try, since they're trying to you know jack our taxes through the roof, it'd be nice if they contribute some of the money onto viable things like looking after the lake. That would be my recommendation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a Verge W. Yeah, hi, sorry. So that's just the name that comes up for me, but Virginia Wolfram at 45 Parmenter. So 
probably one of the newer um, residents to make acquaintance to guys. So um, first, I just yeah, I want to appreciate, Michael, the way that you clarified a bit in the beginning on some of the transfer and how, you know, the conversations go between the committees. Um, I am aware of some of that. I think the challenge was is on some of the previous meetings in November, there was that direct request for open space to transfer the potential um, into parks and recs, right, for their consideration on this lot on Parmenta Road. So really, I don't want to belabor all the points that were already brought into the conversation. I mean, I think the residents, are, you know, are pretty clear on the fact that, you know, we see a lot of challenges with this being a junction of three roads, two of which are dead ends. You're going to have locked grid turnaround points, challenges backing up traffic, if you add trailers into that, the road is narrow. I mean, some of our even electric wires run into our front yard. I mean, there, there really is not adequate space on these roads to begin with. Never mind adding what I would say more congested traffic um, as part of this recommendation. So, you know, one thing I do just want to highlight is that I agree and understand that part of this is the recommendation, but I do think that these are points of concerns that need to be you know, to reiterate what Joel said, need to be considered as part of that overall recommendation. We can't just stay blind to the fact that there's safety concerns, that there's congestion, that it's a heavy, thickly settled neighborhood, that kids are standing on the front end of these lots time and again. So I think, you know, as part of that recommendation, we have to be very, very clear to understand what it is that we're recommending and in what part of the leak. In particular to Parmenter, there's a lot of risk there with the, the thickly settled area and the residential space. Um, the other couple things that I wanted to bring up was, you know, the um, pie-shaped corner lot here. You know, I think the one thing of interest that hasn't been brought up or something that, you know, I noted in a letter that got sent to um, both the select board and many of these committees today um, is that there's that storm drain that lies on the property that has a 10 foot easement on both sides. If you take into account that 10 foot easement, you're already reducing your late front access to about 29 feet, give or take, if the lot lines are even true to date, mm -hmm. okay? So if you consider that mm -hmm. and you say that's gonna put you far over to the Johnson Street entry side of that pie shaped in lot, you are literally going to be launching right into where residential docks already exist. So if you walk that, walk down to that, there is not a separate way to launch into that without disrupting the residents, even from a launch standpoint. Okay. Yeah. Second to that, what's interesting is that if you go back to where the lot lines lay, you have about 87 approximate feet from the corner of Johnson to Parmenter. This actually does not line up to how the Parks and Recs and the team have shown the carport on my property on 45 Permenter and where that lot line combines. On the meeting, it was mentioned that the neighbors are using our land. That is not accurate in that it's 87 feet from the corner leaves about 15 feet to the carport. And this is actually a bylaw, a step back law by Lunenburg. You can't build right up to the edge of your lot line. So the carport and how that diagram was being presented is showing a line that goes right to the edge of my carport today. So we will have to invest in surveys, really understanding what that line looks like. This is going to further trim probably what you're already looking at is a 20 foot less waterfront frontage, right? Once you take the storm drain, the easements and those pieces into consideration as well. Um, I think the other thing too is just the no touch. I mean, I know people mentioned kind of the ADA and some of the compliance and those different things, but there is a lot of bylaws there with the, um, you know, both the state law demanding 30 feet, but also the conservation, the 50 feet. If we go into a process of clearing trees, you know, making exceptions to really remove this within those lines to make accessible access, which will be required by law. We're definitely setting a precedence for the lake. I mean, people are challenged day in and day out to do any sort of work or removal of their trees, any sort of access to that location. And you're already talking about a narrow lot. So you're gonna have to remove many of these trees to even gain access down to the water. There is not like an easy path to go down. 
um, just given how the lot is as a whole. So, you know, I think as a whole, I just, you know, I want to echo that obviously I'm very opposed to the use of Permenter, as I think we can see many of the neighborhood residents are, and hence all of us being on this call tonight, um, just by even the outward discussion about the potential of car top or trailers or, you know, access as a whole. Um, I think that all of us at Reckwing, we understand that we are evaluating all open spaces and that the town has to consider that. And these committees are looking for any potential access points for the town. But I think we also just need to be considerate of, you know, thickly, you know, residential areas, safety concerns. Um, and we really need to evaluate them for the best locations, um, not just because it's an open space. So, you know, my recommendation would be that it just stays open um, given it being the junction and the slope. So. Yeah. I would just like that to be taken into consideration <clears throat> as part of your overall recommendation of whether or not this either gets transferred or even gets pursued through the Board of Selectmen. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Anna. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mike, if I could yeah. just ask Virginia to spell her last name for me, I didn't catch it. Yeah, sure. So it's Wolfram. It's W-O-L-F-R-A-M. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon. Anna, you, you're muted. Thank you, Mike. Um, so a couple of things, um, and you know, Bob, he's not on, I don't know if he's on the call, but um, he asked that the Parks Commission would make, write a letter. We, we did have a vote in one of our meetings and we, I did come to this commission as a formal request from the Parks Commission. So I just wanna make that clear. Yeah, um, and you're the representative from the Parks Commission to this committee, so I I have no problem with okay. you bringing it <laughs> as the okay. chair of Parks. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, I, I'm not one thing that I I will say generally about this process. All the concerns that the residents are bringing, they're valid, and and they are, you know, and as with everything we have done so far in Parks, we we will take in consideration, and I'm sure. If this moves forward, once we start, if we start investigating the process, the this can this lot be uh, developed for of to anything or not? Is that everything will be taken in consideration? It will be a process, and we'll deal with it um, just as we have done in the past. But you know, we need to start that process in order to have some of these answers, and that's what um, that's what's important to remember. You know, it, it is our due, I, I feel as Parks Commission, I'm not speaking for this this body, uh, that we it is our, 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 our job to explore these options and to have all the answers and, and then decide if we are going to, to move forward or not. So that's what we are doing now is exploring the possibilities. Right. And, and, and we have to explore. So, all the concerns that they, the residents have are valid. So, you know, can we cut down trees? What trees can we cut down? So any before we ever develop the property, we will have to go through, we don't just get permits because we're part of town. We got to go through in front of the Conserv Con Conservation Commission. If we are going to build anything, it has to match. It, like, we don't get a free pass just because we are part of the town. So all of those concerns will be addressed. So if this ever gets developed, will be to the standards that it needs to be, period. There's no other way around it. Um, and one thing people are talking about, the Zero Reservoir Road, uh, that location, although it can be used, it cannot be used as much as a location that's right on the water. It's, it's full of weed. One resident has mentioned, even if we develop that, that property, that property will never be uh, easy to access, um, something that, it's it's just not. It's just it's mostly weeds right now. Maybe parts parts of the year there is water that you can more easily get a kayak there, but most of the year is swamp. I I know that, and even even if we develop that, that's going to be very limited. So, you know, I, mostly what I want to say is there is value for the town on this on evaluating if this property should be 
if there is value on exploring this property or not, and we have to investigate. And all the concerns are valid and they are going to be taken consideration if we move forward, but it is our job to pursue this as an option. So that's okay. all. Thank you. I see uh, Jerry's iPad. Hi, I'm Jerry Brown, 5 Johnson Street. Um, I'm a butter to the uh, property that you guys are talking about. And I just feel like it's a lot smaller piece of property than you than you really think about. And in the summertime with, uh, as you had mentioned, our uh, dog coming out and our boat right there, it's a very tight little spot right there to uh, come in and out of with kayaks. I don't know what kind of traffic might be coming out of here, but I think any is too much. Just wanted to voice that opinion. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, Mr. Spint, I see you right, you're waving your hand. Go ahead. Mr. Spint, unmute yourself. Okay, I'm sorry. That's I'm, okay. I'm, I'm trying to get on this Zoom thing and I don't know how to raise my hand on that. So I have you to do did, it in you person. You're fine raising your hand. Okay, again, it, this is Gary Spint. Uh, I live at 7 Ruth Street, which is right across the street from Jerry, who just spoke. And although I haven't met you in person yet, Virginia, we're kind of kitty corner to one another uh, where we are. Um, I've been a resident of the lake now for eight years. And um, right there in that corner, I want to voice my uh, extreme anxiety about that area for safety purposes and back up what um, Mary Perkins said about that. Uh, there's people that go into that cove. There's no speed limit in that cove. There's not a, there's not a, uh, a buoy that says going into that cove, slow down to uh, five miles an hour like there is around Shady Point or any of those places like that. I've witnessed on numerous occasions uh, boats of all type, jet skis, all kinds of things going from the section of our lake that, that is our backyard and going into that cove, which is a small cove. I've witnessed a number of people entering that at anywhere from 50 to 60 miles an hour on jet skis and whatnot. There are people that go awfully fast into that. And uh, if you're even in the best case scenario, if you say, okay, we're going to have this section for just kayaks and a person, we won't cut down any trees. There won't be um, all kinds of uh, ramps or anything. You can carry them down and put them in the water. Now you have a kayak who's attempting to get out to go to say Stump Cove. And it's a blind corner there as you enter um, Millionaire's Cove. Uh, having a terrible problem with being hit and 